Welcome to Rick's Corner. Well, it's another day of rehab and I've moved up to a cane now from the walker, so I'm getting around, I'm back in the gym every morning doing upper body, uh, actually upper body, it's like works out to be about three times a week on each body part, which was really old school. But it's starting to get some good results. I can't do legs for probably at least another six weeks or so. And then I will, then I actually hit, hit them. Uh, I want to thank Brickyard Gym. They sent me a t-shirt, a baseball shirt, really nice one to wear, and I wanted to show that uh, I had it on the show. Uh, many of you ask about bench press. It's something that isn't really discussed a lot, but I know that even when I started training, people want to get their bench press up. If you could bench press a lot of weight, you were strong. This is something that everybody had a goal to do. Uh, it was much easier than a standing press and much easier than a squat or a deadlift, but um, you either have the ability or you don't. I know that's it's really hard for some people to get that thing past 200 pounds, and they work at it, and they work at it, and I, I don't know what the problem is. Maybe they're just not doing their sets properly. I found, it was always an easy lift for me, but I found that if I worked it a couple of times a week, actually I think I was doing bench three times a week when I started, but uh, I think that might have been overdoing it. I would start with like 12 reps. Let's just say I had 12 reps, and then I'd increase the weight maybe by 30, 40 pounds, and then I'd do 10, and then I would do eight, and then I would do six. Then I'd keep increasing every set to four reps, to two, and then a couple of singles. After I did the singles, I'd go back down to 10 or eight, and I'd pump up some light reps just to get a pump in after that, and that was it. If I did this uh, two workouts out of three, my weight would increase dramatically. Three workouts is too much. If you're gonna go maximum every workout, you're gonna go down rather than up. You need that rest in between. But for powerlifting back then, I always felt like the 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 1 worked really well for me. And uh, even then, I, I had to think back, it's so long ago, I think I was training each body part three times a week as they did like in the Steve Reeves days and all that. And I, I made a lot of progress with it. But bench press um, came and I remember hitting 200, I remember hitting 250, and I was at the YMCA and they had this bent bar and I managed to get 300 pounds out of that. And boy, I was so happy that day. I, said, I actually benched 300 pounds with a stiff bar that was bent. And that was from doing that, pro, that, that program. Now, if you guys are having sticking points, you always get levels or plateaus where you, where you stick, take a couple of days off, eat well, go back and do it again. Now. I also believe that your mind is stopping you because your mind, as I've said millions and millions of times, tells your body what to do. Your body's not going to change overnight. If you're consistent with your eating, you're consistent with your sleeping, your body's not changing. Your mind gets weak. So if you go into the gym and you can't lift what you did the last workout, your mind isn't letting you do it. It's just telling you you can't. Something's in the way. Something you had a, maybe a breakup with your girlfriend, maybe you had a... Uh, something that's bothering you, you're, you're not focused on the, on the set. You need to really focus on those sets. You've got to put your whole head into that rep and get those reps out. So try doing the 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 1 and do another one and then go back for a pump set. Then move on to, uh, you can move on to inclines after that and side flies. Now for many years I did bench press and many years I got stronger up to about 440 pounds, I think it was, 445, something like that. Yeah, I got bigger, but it, it didn't develop my pecs like dumbbells did. So I made, one day I said, I'm switching. I switched over to the dumbbells. And I started doing dumbbells every workout because you could get deeper with the dumbbell and you can come together at the top. So you're actually working your pec a little better. Now, when you're on bench press, you can only you have limited movement, straight up and down. Dumbbells, they come together. So you might want to switch that out too. And uh, if you do, your bench may drop a little bit because lack of doing something, you get weaker. Now. If you don't bench press for two or three months, you're really weak at it. It's something you have to do all the time. It's like chins. If you do chins all the time, you get better at chins. The minute you stop doing chins for a couple of weeks, you lose your strength. It just happens. So follow that routine. Also, what I used to do, even in between the heavy days on bench, I would do wide grip to the neck. I mean like really wide for 12, 15 reps, three or four or five sets, which brought my pecs out wider and even those high reps gave me more definition within the pecs at all. So it worked out pretty good. But that's that's how you get your bench up. You know, you want to do those reps like I said, and your bench will come up, and I'd like to hear from you, and tell me how it worked for you. Okay, try it, and see what you think. Now we're going to go to questions and answers. All right, I get questions all the time about things, and I try to answer them, and a lot of my videos are, are repetitious, so you, you can see it on all my videos. But somebody wrote in, and they asked me, and said, how do you stay so positive? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm a positive person, I guess. I don't look at the dark side of anything. I mean, I see it, I'm aware of it, and then I walk away from it. But I try to look on the light side of everything. 
I don't think that I've ever thought in my lifetime that I can't do something. Maybe I'm naive, but I don't know the word no. I used to go on auditions for movie parts and thought, you know, I'm going to get this. I'm, I know I can do it, and I'll do it. And I'd get it, but then sometimes I wouldn't. If I didn't get it, I thought, okay, something came up, I wasn't right for it. But I get out of bed every morning with injuries and the way I feel, and I'm going to conquer the day. I know that I'm going to come in, eat breakfast, watch the news, get myself together, and I'm going to the gym. I know that that's going to wake me up, I'm going to feel better, and then I do my day throughout like that. Yes, we all have roadblocks in the way. We have people that step in our way and, and block things we're trying to accomplish. But if you think that you're going to accomplish something, you will. Don't let things bother you. Don't let them get you down to where you're really upset. It's just not worth it. It's, it's not worth having ulcers and anxiety over things you have no control of. And the only thing you really have control of is yourself. You don't have control of that person or that person or your girlfriend or that guy or that business or whatever. You can't control it. It does what it's going to do regardless. You just have to work around it. So if you can do that and work around things and be in control of your own thoughts and always think it's going to work, it's going to work, it's going to work, it will work. And when you manifest something out there that it's not going to work, it's not going to work. Um, if you ha manifest that uh, you know, your, your girlfriend's going to break up with you or your boyfriend's going to break up with you, they will because you've manifested. You put it out in space. If you think positive and say this is great, it's going to work out, it will. That's my take on that particular question. Then somebody else asked me about IGF. Uh, is it real? I don't know. It depends where you get it. IGF-1 LR3. It's a uh, peptide, which is an uh, insulin uh, acting like drug. Uh, it's the higher echelon of GH. The difference between the two is GH, um, you got to take a lot of it, number one. It increases the cell size of the muscle, but increases cell size of your organs and cancer or anything else you have, too. So you got to be careful with it. And it lasts about 20 minutes in a system. So you got to do it morning and night throughout the day because the shelf life or your body life, it doesn't last long. IGF is a different component of that. It's a step up insulin growth factor. And like I said, it's a peptide, but it lasts 20 to 30 hours. So if you shoot one one day, you're good. You can probably go every other day or you can go two days, one day off and something like that. What I've read about it and what I've heard of it, it doesn't increase the cell size. It breaks the cells in half and it doubles them. So you're actually making two cells out of one and four cells out of two and eight cells out of four. So what you gain on IGF to build muscle actually stays with you. You don't lose it when you go out because those cells are already there. That's pretty much my knowledge on it. Now with this injury that I had, not injury, but my knee replacement, my doctor suggested I go back on testosterone, especially at my age. He said, we'll help you heal. I said, what about the IGF? He says, yes, just be aware that it does hold water and you have a little edema from injury. And so you're going to have fluid in your legs and your feet from the water. So take a diuretic with it. So I've been taking this and I'm healing pretty quick and I'm really happy about it. So that's the uh, answer to the, hope, the, the question you had, and I uh, hope I answered those. So if you, want, if you have more questions, write in, and I'll have a period at the end of my show that's questions and answers. Okay, now I want to give you a tip of the week on something. I'm very big on taking care of myself as far as my exterior as well, as you should be. Skin is very important. Skin needs to be clean and uh, moisturized and soft and not scaly and not dry because your skin is what people see and if it's bad and pimply and just not taken care of and dirty it represents you. The other thing is teeth. Now how many times have you looked at somebody and the people's teeth are yellow and dirty and full of food and you go, oh my god, don't they ever brush? There's no need to have yellow teeth in this day and age. If I saw a girl and I was dating and she had yellow teeth, the last thing I want to do is kiss her. And if you have yellow teeth, that's the last thing I want to do to you. I mean, they don't want to see that. It's, it's disgusting. And you get stains from coffee, you get stains from tea, you get stains from foods and tobacco, and your teeth start to turn yellow and yellow. And people get older, they don't take care of them. They just get yellow teeth. And it's just not necessary in this day and age. There are, there's a company that have power swabs, and they sent me a sample pack of power swabs. It's at powerswabs.com, and you can actually lighten your teeth in five minutes, uh, two shades. And then if you go a whole week, it'll, light, it'll lighten five shades lighter. I'm not selling you this. I'm just telling you that this stuff works. And if you want to have a nice smile and you want to have white teeth, go to powerswabs.com and look at it. And you can order them. They're not expensive, and they work. You just swap them on like you would with a Q-tip, and they'll take stains out of your teeth and lighten them up within five minutes. And after a whole week, you got white teeth. Now, you can go to the mall and have it done for $100 and sit there like this for an hour. Or you can use the swabs and do it yourself at home. Keep them white all the time. This is just my tip of the week to you. I think it's going to work because you're building your body. You're muscular. You have good skin now. Your hair is looking good if you have hair. And you're going to have white teeth, which gives you that winning smile. Because a smile with pretty teeth is going to get you through a lot of doors. Trust me, brother. It works every time. 
Okay, thanks for watching Rick's Corner, and we'll see you next time. And I have some more guests coming on this week, and uh, the show's taking off again like it did at the end of last year. I'm back in good health, and I'm ready to shoot some shows. See you guys next time. Bye bye.